Hey guys, so before we get into anything else, we gotta talk about the gem file. And the gem file is found at the root of your project. So what the gem file is, is it's a collection of all the libraries that you're gonna use in your project. So to make it as simple as I can describe it, a library is pretty much something that another person, another developer has created that does something really generic. So for example, let's say you want to read from the database. Now that's something that pretty much everybody needs to do. So then there would be a library to make reading from the database much more easier. Or let's say you are a person that needs to use jQuery or JavaScript to, in, in your application to make it interactive. Well, this library or what Ruby calls it, a gem, is what is used or what is imported in order for you to get that kind of actions. So that's pretty much what a gem file is. It's a collection of all the gems that you will use and you can basically put your gems in certain environments like development or tests or production, so whatever you want. So in today, today's in this file that we have, this is the gem file that was generated by the application when we did Rails New and Project Me, or Project Me. We're gonna replace this actually, and we're gonna put a more custom gem file. This will consist of all the gems that you'll use by the end of the series. So this gem file is inclusive of all the gems that we will use in these series of videos. I will refer to them in the future videos or refer to specific gems in the future videos to give you a more in-depth explanation of how they work. But to get your gems compiled or make sure they work, you would have to run something called bundle install. So when you create these or when you type out what gem you want in your file, it doesn't mean it's installed. You have to run them by doing a bundle install in order to actually get your libraries installed. So an analogy would be kind of like you're looking for new wheels for your car. Well, looking is one thing, but actually going out there and buying them and installing them is another thing. And bundle install is pretty much buying and installing your wheels. So this gem log file is basically the wheels that you've, that you've bought and installed for your car in terms of you know, using that analogy and that's what comes out of bundle install. If you want to update a certain specific gem then you could run bundle update and what this will do is it will look towards your gem and grab the latest updates but if you put a certain version of number on it for example sprockets have a version number of 2.11.0 then that's pretty much the highest version that it will go to. So running bundle update will always lead up to 2.11.0. Same for this little arrow sign and 4.0.0. If you don't have uh, a, a, a number, then it will just grab the latest version that's out there. So running bundle and bundle update pretty much updated our gems to the to their most up-to-date version. And instead of bundle install, you could also run bundle um, if you want. And I use I use either or. Sometimes I use bundle install. Sometimes I use bundle. Bundle is kind of like a shorter version of bundle install. You, you typically run bundle, but you run bundle install the first time when you want to, this gem file dot lock to be generated. Other than that, that's all I want to go through for today. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.